Hi, my name is Joe Howard and I work for NASA on the James Webb Space Telescope project. My primary responsibility is the lead optical designer for the government team uh, overseeing JWST. So what does the lead optical designer do? Well, I primarily trace rays. So tracing rays is a fundamental skill that we learn when you get a degree in optical engineering and we uh, use that again and again and again. So at the beginning of a project we trace rays in order to determine the actual optical design for the telescope to see if it's good enough. Does it meet the requirements that science wants it to, to uh, uh, achieve? Do we have the proper field of view? Do we have the image quality that we need over that field of view? Later in the project, after the, the design is set, then we're tracing rays uh, in an optical model to determine if the if the, uh, uh, the actual components that are being built for the optical system, that is the secondary mirror, let's say we have data on how the secondary mirror looks, um, does that still meet our image quality requirements? So we're tracing rays using as-built data in our optical model to see if the uh, system is uh, still performing the way we want it, is it within tolerance, and, and that, that, uh, um, that sort of aspect. So, so and, and finally, towards the end of the opti uh, towards the end of the uh, ground program for James Webb, uh, we will have the entire observatory in an end-to-end -end test, and with all of these components built up into it. And and as an optical, as the lead optical designer, I trace rays to simulate this test to predict what we will uh, see during the test, and and help train uh, the people that are running the test to. You know, given this, you're going to see this sort of thing. What do you do with it? Does that match what you expect to see? So, in a nutshell, as a lead optical designer, I trace rays. So, one of the challenges, since JWST is going to be extremely far away, uh, we, uh, in theory, at this time, do not have the capability to go out and fix things uh, like we did the Hubble, uh, and and in case they and in case things happen that we don't expect. So, uh, one of the design. Uh, aspects of JDBST is to build uh, extra movement capability in the mirrors uh, that need to be aligned. So for example, uh, on the 18 segment and primary mirror, each one of these mirrors has the ability to move in a full six degrees of freedom. They can tip, tilt, piston, move sideways and up and down in order to align themselves next to each other to have this perfect dish uh, that is the primary mirror. The secondary mirror is also movable in a full six degrees of freedom. Only five are really effective, but uh, the secondary mirror needs to be focused just right since that's kind of the primary focusing element for the uh, telescope. And so those are, the, those are the main moving mechanisms in order to align the telescope. Uh, in the back of the telescope, we have four primary instruments, uh, instrument packages, and uh, these instruments have the ability to set their own focus such that when the telescope sets a common focal surface, the instruments can move their individual focuses to that focal surface. So with the primary mirror actuators, the secondary mirror actuator, and the individual science instrument uh, focus mechanisms, uh, they have extended ranges to ensure that if something slightly goes wrong, that we can fix it. So for space astronomy, uh, JWST is one of the first uh, missions to actually deploy this much, the primary mirror. And, uh, and, and part of that deployment in getting the primary mirror phased, uh, we had to develop quite a bit of technology in order to phase the primary mirror uh, using image-based methods. And, and we refer to this typically as wavefront sensing and control. So we use a phase retrieval process. That is, we take pictures of a star that is highly out of focus, both on one side of focus and the other side of focus, and do a lot of analysis on this data uh, to determine exactly how the primary mirror segments have to be moved. And this method was, uh, was investigated after the uh, Hubble uh, incident with the uh, primary mirror having large amounts of spherical aberration, and it's been perf perfected over the uh, last few decades. And so that is our primary uh, method for actually aligning the telescope. And this uh, will, I think, flow into quite a bit of future space telescopes. The ability to use your science instruments. Okay, so this is a, an, in, uh, an instrument that you are including in the mission just for science. And that science instrument, not only does it provide the science, but at the beginning of the mission, it gives you data in order to align your observatory. Now, uh, other, uh, other telescopes have a separate instrument to do this alignment, but this uh, capability of doing it with the science instruments is, is, uh, is rather nice because then you don't have to add additional uh, mass or weight for your you know, spaceflight launches and 